time I heard about Arrow Fishing Festival was maybe in primary school, when, uh, social studies, when they teach you about the culture and traditions of different parts, in different parts of Nigeria. And Arugungu Fishing Festival has always fascinated me. Uh, when I see reports about the festival happening, maybe on TV, during news updates and all that, I always wished I would have the opportunity to attend the festival someday. Luckily for me, I should say, um, in March this year, I was able to attend the festival and I had fun. It was a very rich event for me and in fact, it's something that I, I wish everybody has the opportunity to also experience. But for those who are not able to experience it, maybe this short documentary can also throw some light on what happens during the festival and all you need to know about the festival. Agugun Fishing Festival is one of the oldest traditional fishing festivals in Nigeria and was first celebrated in the 16th century. The fishing festival started out first as a form of religious ritual considered to be an informal event for families and communities. However, it went through various forms of modifications and changes over the years. So by the time I had decided I was going to attend Arungu Fishing Festival, I needed to know what date it was going to happen. All all the while checking online there was no specific date that this was like in december 2019 there was no specific dates there was just kind of uh should i say rumors that the fishing festival might hold in 2020 because it had not held for almost 10 years it was put on hold due to insecurity issues in the region so there was this uh, back and forth about arugu fishing festival holding in 2020 so by the time it was January in 2020, I, I had to put it out there on my social media uh, platform asking for anyone who has information or who actually stays in Kebi State because I really needed someone on ground to provide information since I wasn't able to get it online. And um, luckily for me, I got a, a friend who had served in Kebi State and had some contacts in the state. and. From there, we're able to get more information about dates for the festival and all the things we needed to know about the festival. So that was kind of sorted. Although the dates changed sometime, but that's really not a big deal. So it, it, the next hurdle was deciding how to get to our Google itself. Uh, I have two options. Either travel by road or go by air or a, a combination of both. I, I I chose going by air because traveling by road from Lagos to Kebi State wasn't an option for me. One, because of the distance and then the state of our roads in Nigeria. So I wasn't ready to go through that whole stress of traveling almost 12 hours of bad roads. So I opted for traveling by air. The option of traveling by air, uh, there, was, there was actually no direct flight from Lagos to Kebi states there you had to like uh, break the journey so I, I opted for the route of going to lagos abuja and then abuja to sokoto you could actually go from abuja to Kebi directly but i went to sokoto because i also wanted to take an advantage of the experience of traveling up north to also see some other interesting parts of the north that i've always wanted to be be to so sokoto it was my first time in sokoto and i actually enjoyed that experience but that's a story for another day today for this shoot we're focusing on the Agungu fishing festival so my journey was lagos abuja then abuja sokoto then by road less than two hours journey from sokoto to to bring kebi which is the capital of kebi state so that was really logistics for me hotels there were there were actually when you search online, there were options for hotels, but really, until you got on ground, um, you wouldn't 
have an idea of cost of the hotel and all that. I said you had someone on ground. Luckily for me, I had someone on ground who was able to make hotel arrangements and, and that made it quite easy for me. So I actually stayed in Bininkebi and traveled at about 30 minutes every day to Arungu itself. Arungu is a local government on its own. It's a, it's a town on its own. So kind of 30 minutes away from uh, the state capital, which is Birinkebi. So I actually went from Birinkebi to Arungu and then came back to Birinkebi at night uh, every day. So that's really how I shuttled when I was at Arungu. The International Festival is an annual four-day event in the state of Kebi, in the northwestern part of Nigeria. The fishing competition is the highlight of the festival. Fishermen jump into Matanfada River and have an hour to scoop the biggest catch for a big cash prize. It is considered a contributor to the participants' sense of identity and is also used as a means of maintaining peace between the Agungu and neighboring Sokoto communities who enjoy shared cultural practices. The festival also marks the end of the growing season and the beginning of harvest. close friends and family about going to Kebi State up north, there was always this warning about be careful, you are a woman and all that. Fine, I wouldn't say I wasn't careful because I actually did my research about dress code and all that. So I actually was confident I was going to be fine. But something very, very interesting happened. And what was that? Um, on the first day of the festival, I left my hotel room and got to the park. Uh, where you now get a vehicle that takes you to Arungu. And when I got to the park, remember this is like Kebi State. I've never been to Kebi State. I do not know anyone in Kebi State. And all of a sudden, I just hear my name, Fego. Like, who knows me in Kebi State? And it was like an upgrade in my mood, really, where I was now able to see people who I knew. Fortunately for me, Mr. Kunle and Mr. Moses, um, also photographers and Mr. Moses and artists were also at Arungu fish, to attend the fishing festival. So they were also living from Green Kebi on their way to Arungu and then we met at the park. Um, why I'm sharing this is because meeting them added more value to my experience at Arungu fishing festival. These are people who have been to the festival more than four times. This was my first time. So it was really nice to have people who I knew, who were professionals and who knew exactly what was going to happen or an idea of what to, what was going to happen and then were able to guide me uh, through my first experience at our Google Fishing Festival. So I had a lot of fun working with these guys and I believe attending such, such festival becomes more interesting when you have like a team of professionals with you or friends experiencing the festival with you because really Sometimes I try to imagine how it would have been if I was the only one, just the way I left Lagos to Kevin State, and if I was the only one covering the event on my own, for my own documentation, I might have been boring. But yeah, I would have made new friends. But having people who already knew you as a professional from Lagos was kind of a value add for me. So, so one of the, the things that really was interesting for me was the fact that Mr. Kunle and Moses were not just interested in covering the festival itself. They also taught me that we needed to go into the city or into the town and mingle with the people. Like take pictures on the streets, document the people of Aragungu itself. Not everyone would be at the venue for the different events that were happening during the festival. Some people were at their market, their business places, in front of their houses, and just interact. So it was really beautiful, a beautiful experience. And for me, a lesson I learned that 
that I was there for our Google Fishing Festival I didn't mean that I couldn't also take out time to mingle and like know more about the people of Arungu itself okay so that was really um, an interesting and a value add for me having Mr. Kunle and Moses uh, together in as a team working in the Arungu Fishing Festival how, how did you get introduced to Arungu? Oh, Arugungu is a long story. Okay. Let me start from, I started Arugungu 2004. Wow. I was opportune to serve in Kebbi State. Okay. First, I put it to Kamba, and Kamba is under Arugungu Emirates okay. in Kebbi State. Mm -hmm. From Kamba, I was reposted to Bini Kebbi, Ministry of Information. Mm -hmm. From Ministry of Information, a capital, Bini Kebbi. From there, after youth service, during, during the youth service days, I went to Arugungu. Mm -hmm. And it was just, I keep, I was just saying, wow, this is what I've been missing. Mm -hmm. Then there was not fishing festival, but what I saw inspired me that mm -hmm. I must tell a story about this place. From there, I keep on, keep on, as in taking photograph, sketching, each, every, Every weekend from Bernie Kirby, I go back to Arugungu, as in just to take. As a core member. Okay. As a core member. Mm -hmm. I go to Arugungu, sketches, I take photographs, apart from Arugungu, other local government as well okay. in Kirby State mm -hmm. to document. So the interest of Arugungu, I said, let me just focus on Arugungu. Arugungu, as Ar Arugungu don't need any introduction. The festival have blown the city already yeah. i said let me contribute my little quarter to improve the festival as well mm -hmm. that way with uh, uh, the arugungu series came in yeah arugungu fishing festival is regarded as an international festival and it is a tool for conserving natural resources maintaining and promoting traditional life and provides economic benefits the indigenous believe they have been fishermen for all time a key part of the festival is a ritual conducted before the fishing competition commences. This is to signify worship of the river deity and indirectly ensure conservation of natural resources in the river. There are different activities that take place as part of the celebration of Agongu Fishing Festival. The doba, wrestling matches, water sports, night events such as dancing, singing, drama presentation and acrobatic display. Arabungu series is an ongoing documentation on Arabungu Emirates. The focus is to talk about Arabungu in general, not just the fishing festival. Mm -hmm. Down this side, once you mention Arabungu, what goes to the mind is fishing festival, but okay. I'm documenting beyond the fishing festival. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, you have, what's like the process? It means that you, are, you go to Arabungu even when there's a fishing festival. Yes. Fishing festival, sala period, and when there is not even festival as well, mm. to feel how the area looks like when there is no activities. Mm. Okay, that's interesting. So that's basically that's like your life work, like you said. That's your focus. Your life projects. Yeah. So how has it been, really? Uh, great, great, great. Because I remember 2013, my first. Series one of the documentation of the exhibition of Tara culture. The Emir could not come, but he sent someone to represent him. Even the state government sent some, mm -hmm. someone to represent. And that is a booster to the project as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have actually gotten the attention of the, the government here, the state and, and, and the Emir. So far, so good is done to says it from the documentation and exhibition. I don't get tired. No. <laughs> so what, what really, well, you already said you are, you kind of feel a connection with the Arugungu Emirates and people, your culture and all that. And really, that's something I also enjoyed about my experience. I was one of those people who thought it that Arugungu Fishing Festival was all about fishing. Like from the first day, I was even wondering why do you need a, why do you need a four day event to do a fishing festival? Oh, okay, fine. This four days event, maybe they have different fishing competitions, and then uh, on the final day, the, the final people who are, who are finalists, 
now get into the river and then they get the winner. I thought it was all about fishing, but my mindset completely changed by the time I attended Aragugu Fishing Festival. It is not just about fishing. It is really a cultural display. It's like an opportunity for the people of Kebi State and neighboring communities, Argungo and neighboring communities, to actually showcase their culture, their tradition. And that's exactly what it was about. We had, there, there was the Doba, I actually enjoyed the Doba festival, where you had a colorful display of different traditions, different, um, different colors, like there were colors everywhere. Um, the Doba festival is like a display of the different communities that make up the Arungu Emirates and then even neighboring communities join in the Doba and then they like parade, do like a parade, it's like a parade of different communities in, in the region and it was a very beautiful display. It was my first time to actually be close to, to be in a Doba event first of all and then to also experience being close to a camel like live and to see how these guys were so excited about what they were going to do the display and all that was really interesting so there's the doba festival there there are there are wrestling matches folk folk tale or folk drama right at night at the emir's palace so there were different activities that actually happened during the four day period cum that culminated with the fishing competition itself there was also this water sport which i also enjoyed uh, where they had different types of competitions that happened in the river it was gamji river where um, there was one where the guys had to be inside the water and then not take any breath and the last person to come out there was this spot here last person to come out was like the winner so it was about how long you could stay inside the river without breathing and so it was fun to see that uh, there was one where they, they threw some ducks a number of ducks into the water and guys some the people had to rush in and the first person to actually catch a duck you know ducks actually survive in the water so they would run away and all that so the competition was about being able to catch a duck and then being the first person to come back to the bank of the river all that interesting spots actually took place uh, during during the festival which i actually enjoyed uh, seeing so really if you are thinking about Ar attending a fishing festival it's not just about the fishing competition the fishing competition is just one aspect of the whole event that happened during the Aragungu fishing festival let's, let's come down to the fishing festival we most times for me when i when i this year about Aragungu fishing festival i always thought it was fishing from day one to the end <clears throat> until I got there and I saw that it's not other just activities. other activities actually take take place and it makes the uh, festival more interesting. interesting. Yeah. So what maybe I, I might have missed some at least uh but at least that, that was my first time this year. But maybe there are other things that also happened that I, I may not have seen this year. Can you like share other activities they do? Yeah, the people want. They used to do cultural night, which this last one we witnessed is where cultural night did not they did not do cultural night, which I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Cultural night is a kind of night whereby people from other states as well display their own culture as well. Something I learned from you and Mr. Kunde was the fact that even if you are here for Arab Fishing Festival, it's actually another opportunity to mingle and know more about the people, not just center on where the venue or the event is going on. And as a documentary photographer, as an artist, you find inspiration not just to your event, in quotes, but in relation with relating with the people, the real people who are from this community. So like how how would you share your own experience from not just focusing on the festival itself? But those times you went to the streets, just taking pictures, going to different parts of the, of the town, really. What, what was like the experience for you? Uh, I would say great. Great in the sense that, let's take when there is no festival mm. um, in the streets. Uh, I do not bring out my camera. I will first of all make friends to people around if I see what really I interests me to take. 
Making friends with them will help me to take what the this shot I want. Because you can't just bring your camera in an area which nobody knows you. It yeah. will be somehow, they'll be so skeptical as in, what is this guy doing? So with that help me to have friends in virtually most of the areas in Arugungu. <laughs> Anywhere I go, they'll say, Arugungu series, welcome. Arugungu wow. series, that helps the project yeah. as well. Yeah. On the day of the fishing competition, which is the last day of the festival, over 5,000 fishermen and women gathered close to the river and at the sound of a gunshot, rushed to be the first to dive into the river or at least get a good spot in the river. The person who scoops the largest fish is awarded prize money of $7,000 or $8,000. Uh, the fishing festival, um, like the last day when the men do enter water, the crowds have been in their undress are running from from running towards Matan Father to enter the water. And down this side, when you tell people that that crowd entered the water, people will say, ah, it's not possible. But seeing it is not my first time seeing such thing, whereby crowd, you see dust, people coming out from dust, ah, fun, fun. I could remember my first painting of that. People say, is this possible? I say, this is possible, yeah. very possible. Yeah, and, and they make this fun sound. You know, the first, was it the first day when we got to you and you we were making one sound? Mm. Yeah? <laughs> I don't understand it. <laughs> Until I think maybe during the Doba and then that day. In fact, it was that day of the competition. You understand? <laughs> uh, during during the festival, even not even the festival, I kind of it's like when something is incited to them and they overwhelm, then which they will say. Day of the event is actually the fishing competition proper and that's the day that everybody seems to talk about um, aside the other activities that happen um, in the first three days in fact this year uh, the president of Nigeria was actually at the festival for the Doba I think it was on the second day he was there uh, for the festival so on the fishing festival day that this or not thing that I say it was an advantage for me having people who were experienced already with the festival. Uh, Mr. Kunle and Moses were very helpful in helping me ensure that I capture the kind of images that I really wanted to capture. I found out that on the fishing festival day, fishermen actually troop from different communities, not just Arugundu. In fact, from Kebi, you could, as you were traveling from Kebi, from Bering Kebi to Arugungu, you saw vehicles, buses, cars, bikes, motorcycles with people going to Arugungu. Or you, you, you see a load of calabash fishing nets. You just knew that these guys were going to Arugungu Fishing Festival. So it was really a crowd. You see the crowd walking towards the Matanfada River. Matanfada River is where the fishing competition actually takes place. And the crowd was much like over 5,000 fishermen and women with their calabash and fishing nets walking towards the river. It was a beautiful sight. I, I think I, I took some images uh, while they were walking. You see the crowd walking towards the, the, the uh, what do you call it? Matanfada River. So, one thing I actually noticed, I noticed elderly men, both young, old, little boys, all working towards Madame Father River, wanting to participate in the festival. And for me, I'm like, who is now going to win? You have over 5,000 people coming to rush into this particular water. How is it going to happen? But really, that's, it's, it's actually a very exciting experience for them. And I think it's much more than just being able to win the cash prize, whatever it is, or the new one of the, this year, one of the prizes, the prize was uh, one of the prizes was uh, a car, a brand new car. So I think for the guy, for the for the people of Arugundu and those who participate in the fishing festival, it's something of pride for them. It's something that they want to be part of, not because they want to win a prize, but just because it's part of their culture and they want to participate in it. So it was really interesting seeing that crowd all trooping towards the Matanfada River and wanting to participate in the fishing festival. Another 
thing that is interesting is when I walked towards, because I also came in with the fishermen as we were lining up, so they had to line up, make a very, that was a straight line, but very far. The distance was like, like more than five poles away from the water. So these guys had to line up and then wait for a gunshot. And by the time the gunshot goes out, man, you see people running. You just know, you, you could feel the vibration on the ground. That's to tell you the crowd that was coming towards me. In fact, I was even warned that I should make sure I am not in the path of anybody running because they could actually hit you because their focus is to get into the river first or even at least get a very good spot so that they can be the first to catch whatever the biggest fish which is actually the competition the winner of the competition is the person who catches the biggest fish which is weighed there are there were weighing scales there anybody who gets a cash they they catch they make they weigh it and the person who has the biggest the guys person who has the fish with the biggest weight wins the competition so i was already warned that see by the time these guys start running they are not looking at anything they are just seeing the river so you had better position yourself in a way that you're not going to be hit or stampeded by the crowd which was a very good advice i got by the time the crowd started running towards the river it was something else the the vibration on the ground as they were running the dust the dust that they raised as they were coming in and then their shouts i think um mr moses already told us helped us with the shout but you could hear them shouting and it's actually not a, it's a shout of excitement as they were running towards uh, the the river madame father river so it was quite an interesting interesting sight to behold i don't know how i'm going to experience it more but it's something that you have to experience yourself for you to actually get a feel and understand what I'm talking about so another thing I noticed was some of the fishermen were not there just to win they were just there also to fish because Matafada River is not it is prohibited that anybody fishes on that river until the fishing competition so you can imagine what a river that is in the middle of a town Argungu nobody can fish in it until the festival so it's like an opportunity for everyone who is a fisherman to come in and fish so there were people who were there to just fish catch fish for sale uh, we saw a lot of sales going on people catching there were buyers from the market who came in waiting for fishermen to come out because not everybody will catch a big fish okay that is what weighing so people were just there to catch enough fish to sell and make money off it so it was quite interesting uh seeing that really and then another interesting thing i saw was the fact that by the time it, it was obvious that the water was very cold because by the time the guys came out of the water the river after fishing you could see them setting up fire small fireplaces and just being around the fire to try and heat themselves up and well that was really an interesting experience for me seeing the fishing festival itself take place how do you how do you think these people actually look at this fishing festival do you think it's about really winning the prize only or there's something more to it uh to me to me it's mystical because you see an elderly man say he's going to matan father to fish and some of them let me say some of them are not for the prize does the fun of going into the water and be part of the crowd? Those mm. few of them want to get the prize. Yeah. Mm. Maybe the younger ones. The younger ones. Yeah. Economically, the festival has generally enriched several citizens from Agungu who benefited from the awards of contracts connected with staging the festival. It has been reported that over 4,000 individuals have secured jobs on a seasonal or permanent basis with the Fishing Festival Committee. So what? What really makes our Google Fishing Festival interesting is much more than the competition and the whole activities that go on. It's also about the people. It's also about the people. I think um, sometimes we are up uh, in our homes, far away from, from these people, and we tend to think that they might be hostile people, uh, they are very 
whatever whatever ideas we have about them but when you experience the people of Aragongo they're actually very welcoming very warm-hearted people and friendly some some people might say ah, it's because they had a festival and all that but fine that is what any tourist wants that the people who you are visiting their town or their their village are welcoming and accommodating and that's what that was my experience really um they, they were all smiles um, it was difficult communicating because i couldn't speak the local language but in the little way i could communicate we could actually make some conversation that were that was meaningful um the the i also noticed that because i was I, i'm a female photographer I, I think it was rare to see a woman with a camera or doing this job so that got me a lot of friends to a lot of young girls giggling whenever i'm passing by and wanting to pose for pictures so really i i had a warm reception my reception for me was warm and i liked it um and I think this, this, these are the kind of things we need to highlight by the time we're looking at boosting tourism or promoting tourism in Nigeria. Nigeria is a beautiful country. We have rich culture. In fact, if we want to focus on just selling culture and tradition in Nigeria, we'll be making a ton of money. Um, uh, but for now, it seems, it seems that that's not the focus of, of our of our leaders so but but you see Arungu fishing festival can become a hub just like many other festival that go on festivals that go on in nigeria can become a hub for boosting the economy both for the people of Arungu, the state itself kebi state and the whole of nigeria as a, uh, uh, nigeria as a whole something i noticed uh, in talking about boosting um talking about boosting tourism potential is that we need to actually do more when it comes to the marketing and communication about such festivals it would be nice if the Aragongo fishing festival like what i did from my research i knew that fine i was going for Aragongo fishing festival but there were other interesting things in Aragongo itself and even in kebi state that i could see since it was my first time so i was a tourist right so there's the Kanta museum which holds a lot of artifacts and history when you go to Kanta museum I, I was there it was an interest in fact it was out of this world it was as if i was in one of these mist old films right films that were set in the 16th century or 17th. you see the culture of the people and the history of the people Kanta museum holds a lot of story and just being into the museum, if you even do not have a guide to go through the museum with you, just looking at the things they have there gives you a sense of, wow, these guys have a rich culture and it's something that you could exploit and promote as a country for tourism. So there are other things. There was the, the Zuru Museum. There were other parts of Kebi State I really wanted to visit and see. But there was always a challenge of maybe uh, it was not accessible to to one because of transportation issues um, and all that bad roads and whatever so if we really are serious about tourism in nigeria we will start thinking about how to promote not just one festival which seems to have been consistent over the years but also tie other interesting sites in the same locality so that whoever is traveling to Agungu for fishing festival can also add other interesting um, aspects of the city and the town or even the state to their itinerary so you could go to Kantar museum you could go to the Zulu Zulu uh, museum and other the Emir's palace other parts of so when you are communicating or when you are marketing Agungu fishing festival it should not just be a standalone you should also highlight other aspects of um you should also highlight other tourist sites that could be visited by people when they are there to really position agongo fishing festival as an economic boost for the community and the nation there needs to be a deliberate effort to market the festival as a tourism opportunity all tourist sites in the states have to be a part of the marketing and communication strategy 
of the organizers so that people see going to the festival as an opportunity to visit other exciting places in the area. Arugun Fishing Festival has the potential of boosting the economy of both Kebi State and Arugungu itself. I, I actually believe, I believe that a lot of people come from different communities to Arungo during the fishing festival just to be able to sell, just to be able to make extra money. And that's something that we actually need to look into. Artisans who are making different cultural um, designs, artifacts and all that have a better opportunity to sell their wares during such events. Um, traders, fish, you know, Arungo is known for, known for fish. I also bought fish, like a carton of fish, on my way back. So, people who come into Arungo actually spend money. Come into Kebi, like I stayed in, in, in Berin Kebi. I didn't stay in Arungo because all the hotels in Arungo were booked, fully booked because of the festival. So, you can imagine the, the boost to the economy at that point during the festival. Um, in Kebi State, in Berin Kebi, sorry, the capital where I stayed, I had to commute from Green Kebi to Arungu every day. That's a boost. The driver is making money. The hotel where I lodge, the woman who is selling the, the, the food I had to eat when I got to Arungu. So it is this boost it brings to the economy and the activities that happen during the period. And that's why we need to pay more attention to tourism. Tourism is something that we need to invest in as a nation so that the people of different communities or host communities can begin to look for creative ways to actually make an income, take opportunity of such events to make an extra income for themselves and their families. Fishing festival holds uh, February between February and March every year, and I would encourage everyone to plan to attend at least once in your lifetime. Yeah. Watching videos, listening to reports is not really enough. It doesn't do justice to the experience of being at Arungu Fishing Festival. Okay, you can plan other events around your trip. For me, I plan to visit other tourist sites that I found out about during my research, both in Kebi State. And then I also arranged my trip to also start from Sokoto, where I also visited some tourist sites and before moving to Arungu um, for the festival. So I would encourage anyone who is uh, interested in culture, tourism, or just an adventurous person to add Arungu Fishing Festival to your bucket list. It's something that you will be very happy to be a part of. Nigeria is a very beautiful country and we need to just be deliberate about selling this part of ourselves. We need to, our leaders need to be more deliberate about investing in this sector. The tourism potential of Nigeria is very high. Uh, it's, it's something that we've not even scratched the surface, uh, let alone built any foundations or structure for it. So Nigeria has a big opportunity when it comes to tourism and it's something that we should take um, advantage or leverage on for to boost our economy. This will not happen if we continue to have insecurity in the region or uh, people do not feel safe uh, traveling to such part, other, those parts of the country or any part of the country. So security is very important for us to boost 
the tourism sector. A good transportation network is also very important. I actually can imagine the, the sights and the beauty I missed because I, I traveled by air. Imagine if I had traveled by road, going through all those states, the landscape, the beauty I would have seen. So that's an opportunity. If there was a good rail system or good road networks, I wouldn't have minded doing a road journey. A few days, I, didn't, I don't have to go straight all the way to Kirby State in one day. I could have broken my journey in, in back parts and things. And by the time you see, you see that people are spending money on their way and you are boosting the economy of those communities or those states that they are passing through. So we need to be deliberate about tourism in Nigeria and we have a great opportunity to do that. We need to show leadership. We need to ensure that people feel safe and then we need to ensure that there is a good network of roads, rail and different means of transportation for people to actually assess such events. That will be it from me. I hope you've enjoyed my story and the visuals we brought to you or I brought to you from Aragoni Fishing Festival. If you would like to know more about the festival, you plan to attend, like I said earlier, it holds like February, between February and March every year. So you could always check to ensure that you know the dates and plan to attend if you can or if you want to. Okay, so keep uh, following us on our social media platforms for more stories about different places in Nigeria, different festivals, cultural events that are taking place across the country and across Africa as time goes on. Thank you. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel, YouTube channel, so that you can be one of the first people to get a notification by the time we post new videos. Thank you.